Okay, we're going to box this impression using a combination of plaster and pumice to create the land area that's going to come out from the cast. So basically we're going to create this part of the land area which defines the peripheral width of our final denture. Okay. So basically I want to bury this up to where this line is. And I'm going to use that with this combination of plaster and pumice rather than with wax. So I've got water, three quarters coarse pumice and one quarter quick set plaster. I want a consistency about like stone would be. Not real runny, not so thick that I can't push the impression down into it. So just mix, mix it up like that, about that consistency. I've got a magnet ring that fits, that, that fits in. I want to be careful that I don't wind up over on the side because then I have no land area in that area. I'm going to dump the plaster pumice mix in here, level it out like that. I'm going to give it a little bit more just so I have enough. And I'm going to sink this down at least to my line. And after it sets, it's going to still be soft because of the pumice in with it. So I can refine it. I can carve it down. If you don't have enough, and I might be a little short here, I can add a little bit more because I'm going to refine that before we pour stone in here. Okay. So it looks like that. At this point, I'm just going to let it set. And because it's got quick set plaster, it's only going to take about seven minutes. Okay, make sure you're not off to the side. If it's going to run in the back like it will on a lower, just let it run in. We're going to remove that before we pour it up. Okay, now this is fully set. It took about five or six minutes, but it's set enough so that I can work with it. I'm going to peel that magnet off. So basically I want to refine this land area down to my blue line, exposing the amount of periphery that we want to see in our final denture. The same way we would if we were doing it in wax. Okay, so I'm just going to take this where it ran, ran in the back and where my where it's up a little higher in this area and scrape that off. I'll try not to dig into the impression material, but I want to fully expose this posterior. Get that out of there. And I'm going to go rinse it. Got a little close to the edge along here, but that's enough. And the mistake is to leave pumice in these hamular notches. And if you do that, then you don't have that in your cast, and that's a critical area. Those hamular notches have to be there in a good denture impression. Otherwise, you don't have a good posterior seal. When in doubt, expose too much. In other words, remove a little extra rather than not enough. And that's just going to leave us a little bit of stone to have to grind down, which we're going to refine in anyway. Okay. Remove this extra rather than throw it in the sink. I'm going to come over here and rinse this. Make sure I'm not leaving any pumice, plaster pumice inside the impression. You can take a toothbrush if you need to and brush it lightly. And I'm going to leave this wet because I want it wet when I pour it anyway. Okay. I can come back around here and put the magnet back around. I'm going to line it up where the, where the little index was right there so it fits tight so I don't have stone leaking like that. Impression's already wet. I've already got water measured out in the bowl because water goes first. I'm not going to measure out the powder because I know the consistency I want. Remember that the thicker your mix is, the stronger the stone is. The water is not, has no strength to it. You need the stone. So if you're not sure of that, then you measure out your powder. But I want a consistency that's at least thick enough that it's not going to fall off the spatula. And all the powder is fully saturated. 
get it away from the edge, gasket's clean, and the hose goes in last. And you should be able to see it go up to 20, 25 pounds or so. It started out about 12, so we're netting about 14 pounds. my stone, it's like pouring anything else, put it in the back, pull your area, watch it run through your impression. You've got the impression full, you can impression part of it full of stone. You watch it run in the whole area so you know you don't have any voids, then you can dump in the rest. I know what I need to pour, put it up almost to the top of this magnet will make it about right. If you're doing a lower, you might need to uh, put a second magnet. And that's it. That needs to set for a minimum of one hour. Okay, stone one hour. Okay, so this is set, actually set overnight. It's a one hour minimum. So we're just gonna peel the magnet off. Put that in some water to get the stuff off. So we got a block of stone and a block of plaster pumice mix. Underneath here is the tray, so we don't have to be too careful about hurting anything. And this should be soft enough that we can just carve it away. Okay, so this just comes off, and what we're left it with is our cast and the tray and the impression. Now you can put this under the faucet, and it'll be a little softer, and it can rinse it off or hit it with a brush. Okay. But this particular one impression has been border molded with green stick compound. So this needs to be softened now before we pull this off. If I pry that off, it's gonna break this land area away. So we need to go on the, in a hot water bath, preferably a compound bath, but it doesn't have to be at 140 degrees. Take about seven minutes for that compound to soften. And then this will pry right off and come off easy. So we're gonna go right into here, put it in the water, and let it soak. Okay, so I took that tray off of here. Now we've got a land area that's bordering on being a little thin here. And I got a little bit of a sharp edge on the edge here and a little bit of an undercut in here. I want to reduce this land area, probably only another millimeter more, maybe two millimeters right here. But basically the more we reduce it, the, the narrower the periphery gets. So if you want a real sh narrow, thin periphery, you drop this down. If you want it to be thick and wide, you leave it up higher. And I'm just gonna scrape this with a knife because I don't have to take off very much. If you didn't, didn't box it properly or you left it up away from the peripheral extension, then you can do it with burr. Lastly, we would go around and trim the cast. That's the last thing we do 
We don't want to do that before you refine this land area or sometimes the uh, land area will get too thin. So when we trim around it with the model trimmer now we want the land area to be about this, this wide. <laughs> 